scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Bible tells us that Peter, Peter was in prison. Have you read that scripture? They were, when they beheaded James, and I've shared with us why they beheaded James. Because Peter, James, and John were the pillars of the church. They were the prophetic people that were symbolized as faith, hope, and love. You see that? Uh -huh. That the Bible says these three will remain, but the greatest is love. James was beheaded. When James was beheaded, it pleased Herod, it pleased the people, and the spirit of the Antichrist. Because I hope you know these were the three that followed Jesus to the Mount of Transfiguration. They saw something about a true spiritual man. It was an information that the remaining disciples did not have. And Satan beheaded James. When he beheaded James, they caught Peter. You see why they were going to kill Peter? And then the church started praying. Another revelation of the power of prayer. When the church started praying, watch what happens. An angel stepped into the prison and brought an atmosphere. And watch this. When he told Peter, stand up. When he told Peter, stand up. The same power that that killed others and made them helpless still made a man alive and the bible says the chains on their own volition this is the dimension i'm talking about where chains by themselves fall is not available in every realm please hear me it's not available in every realm if it's available in every realm what then is the reward of obedience and pressing into the spirit this is the realm that the apostle began to speak and said there remained a sabbath a rest for the people of God although they are the people of God that was God's original desire for the nation of Israel in Egypt but the Bible says they could not enter that rest so that rest that means that office in the spirit is still available if you can occupy it he said there remained a rest for the people of God and we labor to enter that rest in the spirit we labor in the spirit to get to that point where we can speak over territories where the the frequency of our voice has risen beyond the second heavens where you can speak and it can rattle the foundations of the spirit and we will get there the price is what we are doing the price is to keep at it sowing to the spirit building capacity in the spirit brothers and sisters this is why we are doing what we are doing and if you do not have the revelation spirituality will bore you because it will look like what where are we going with all this what is the reward for pressing hallelujah thank you jesus christ How does the Holy Ghost make men spiritual? Let's, 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 let's discuss this very briefly. The Holy Spirit is the one who is vested with the responsibility of making men truly become spiritual. But how does he do it? What is the dynamics of that spiritual operation? How does it happen? We know that it happens, but how does it happen? How does that transformation, that shift in the spirit happen? 
the first way he operates is by breaking what the bible calls the power of sin in your life breaking the power of sin over your life let me tell you something small about sin sin is not necessarily fornication and um, stealing and lying that's really not sin in its entire scope are you getting my point sin is an influence that comes as a result of a nature sin the true picture of sin is first a nature it's an influence that can come upon man by reason of the presence of a nature at work in him and then it begins to produce certain outworkings like lust fornication and so on and so forth so to try to solve the problem of sin by um, trying to stop stealing or trying to stop sleeping around is not an ultimate solution this is the picture of what the bible calls the law that's the part of the law trying to use ordinances and not tapping to the power and the supply of the spirit for help because according to the life of a spiritual man your journey begins and continues and ends consistently with the supply of grace from the spirit at no point in your spiritual experience are you allowed to do anything without of the help of the holy spirit and that's the true concept of grace grace is only grace in your life because of what christ has done and the reward of what christ has done is the presence of the holy spirit to help you and there are two dimensions of grace the first is the only one the body of christ knows favor unmerited favor but there is grace as the supply of power to do power to do not just to receive power to do power to pass through a path that you cannot pass through paul began to lament and god said my grace is sufficient grace is also the name of a spiritual ability that helps men to do things supernaturally it doesn't mean that the fact that is grace it means you don't do anything no there are things you do but the energy that is supplied is not yours the power of sin the power of sin is what many believers must allow the Holy Spirit break in their life everyone say the power of sin the power of sin is what Romans chapter 8 verse 1 calls the law of sin and death the word law there is not law like Old Testament the word law there is the word operation the operation of sin and death let's go to Romans 8 verse 1 it says there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. See this concept of in Christ. I don't even want to go into that. It's another controversy. Let's leave it for another day. Because our theology of what we call in Christ. Is not accurate. Believe me. See if you love God. And you truly want to grow. If you listen to what I'm saying. It makes a lot of spiritual sense. It will now begin to give you. And say ah. I now see the reason why this and that and that and that is Romans chapter 8 from verse 1 it says there is therefore now no condemnation to who to who hold on who are the men in Christ that's my first question because the Bible says if you are in Christ this law cannot operate in your life again what does it mean to be in Christ that's a discussion for another day but I can tell you the truth we claim we are in Christ yet this law is still at work in us that means God was saying something we do not understand I'm in trouble again to them which are in Christ who are those in Christ 
those born again those believers pastors church goers that's the theology that we make we, we must examine and that was part of the reasons why people like watchmani and the rest were greatly hated in their days because they came with ideologies and concepts that rattled what the church had agreed upon what does it mean to be in christ if any man is in christ he has become a new creation in that plane wherever that in christ is and whatever it means all things have experientially The Bible says in Christ there is neither male nor female, born nor free. There are many things that the Bible tells us in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. Why did it not say, well, when Paul started his preaching, notice Paul will say, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Towards the end of Paul's ministry, he changed and started saying, Christ Jesus Christ Jesus. Ah, there was a revelation Paul saw. Why did he switch it? What was the revelation? Who is Christ? Is it Jesus? Is it the Holy Spirit? Or both of them? I'm wetting your spiritual appetite. I'm dusting the questions you used to ask that made you grow. That you stop asking and stop growing. Many of us, these are the questions we insisted. When you met a preacher and he said, eh, just this is it you said i know i don't exactly agree and that question the secret is to keep asking not to criticize but to contemplate in the secret place what meaning these things the bible says the prophets kept contemplating looking forward they asked questions they inquired when you inquire of the lord you will find light you will not just absorb anything that a teaching has been prevalent does not mean that it sustains the spiritual accuracy. I truly believe with all my heart that if men like Papa Hagen were still alive, they would have brought certain strange dimensions of the spirit to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Kenneth Hagin and all the great men of God, we cherish them. But do not forget that knowledge stop in it didn't stop increasing at their death are you getting what i'm saying i read one of papa Hagin's books how that he said that um you know handkerchiefs and aprons and he gave a picture from that book like the anointing the only medium that the power of god can flow through is an handkerchief and apron because that's the only one in the bible but today we know better now don't criticize the man he's a man Kenneth Hagin did something to the body of Christ few men have been able to do. Yet, the least among us is still crippled. Paul, in his epistle, will write and say, even this I speak as a man. I have searched as to what the mind of the spirit is about this issue. And it's another spiritual calculus for another day. So I just speak as a man. If Paul were to return back to the earth, he will beg for all the scrolls he wrote and he, he will do major editings of many of the things we have swallowed religiously. <laughs> See some of you looking at me. It is the Bible, of course. See, there is a difference between the Bible and the Word of God. I hope you know that. Because when the apostles were alive, the word of God is what the Bible says, in the beginning there was the word. Was there Bible in the beginning? Answer me. But the Bible says in John 1 that the word of God began the beginning. Proof number one. Proof number two. In those days, men were not given access to what you call Bible. The writings of Isaiah, the prophets and the Pentateuch was kept in the temple. Like we do in Anglican church, first reading, second reading. When you come, they roll it and you read it and leave it there. They roll it back. Have you seen those, those scrolls? So they open it and they roll it and then they bow down and go and drop it back. Yet, Paul said the word of God is quick and powerful. What was his word of God? Are you seeing that the body of Christ truly needs 
a spiritual surgery. There is a need for an authentic apostolic and prophetic spirit to sit down. It's going to come with heavy persecution. Let me tell you. So if you want to be available to be used in editing these things, get set for heavy persecution. Because for some people, you are resetting their spiritual life to zero. You really believe that a man will sit down and watch you reset his spiritual life? It's going to be with him. You see, that's what Jesus did. When Jesus came and he started teaching, the scribes hated him. Because they had to lay down their scribehood and become followers of Jesus. And Nicodemus, while they were arguing in the open, Jesus will hate you. Nicodemus just turned and said, but ah, what is all this? And in the night, Nicodemus sneaked and came and said, Master, we know. In other words, in the council, the truth about the matter is we know. We know you are a man sent from God for no man can do these things except. It's amazing. When you start walking in this light, you will be criticized in the open and admired in the secret. Oh, they will criticize you badly in the open. But in the secret, men will say, what mean at these things? What mystery? sponsors this level of result and audacity that's why you must build capacity in the spirit to be trusted with the mysteries of the kingdom in the days to come many people who call themselves apostles read the bible it was one of the letter to the churches we have tested them that claim they are apostles and found them to be liars a true apostolic spirit is not entitled hallelujah a true apostolic spirit is in the ability to carry the mysteries of Christ to a generation. The mysteries. He said, let a man account of us as apostles, stewards of the mysteries of God. Hmm. The power of sin must be broken over your life. For the power of sin to be broken over your life, the only condition is your total surrender there is nothing else you can add to it the only condition for the power of sin to be truly broken in your life is surrender not just repentance you know what it means to surrender there are three steps to surrender number one you come to terms with the fact that you cannot help yourself two you come to terms with the fact that it will take another agency higher than you to help yourself. Three, you yield to the ability of that greater supply to help you. When that happens, you have surrendered. We sing a lot of things about surrender. Surrender is not the willingness to allow someone change you. Surrender is the ex allowing it happen is surrender. So I come to a point in my life where I see that Lord if it's just left for me, oh, this issue of immorality will continue till thy kingdom come. If it's just left for me, I like money. If it's just left for me, I like power. If it's just left for me, I like political positions. However, I acknowledge that I do not sustain the ability to deliver myself from this body of death. Paul calls it. Romans 7, please. Give us the last two verses. Romans 7. Paul is teaching us how to truly surrender we thought that he was speaking negative it's not negative confession it's the pathway to true surrender Romans 7 all of me I give you all of me I give you all of me I give you you're still looking for it just go to seven and scroll down last last two verses or three look at what paul is saying about himself let's look at 20 23 look at 23 but i see another law paulo walking in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into what this is an apostle in his full apostolic regalia 
Yet he was crying that there was something that was going on in him. How many preachers can cry this today? Because we are embarrassed at it. And we claim like there is no need for any transformation. It's not true. The best of any man of God in this world right now still needs to keep rising. And we must come to a point where we are that humble. That when we teach members, we are not teaching as those who have arrived. It's only a steward. We are ushers in the spirit. Inviting men to join in a pursuit that we should be doing too. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. He said that law is at work in his members. Like a cancer. Next verse. Paul needs help from God. And he says, oh wretched man that I am. In the body of Christ today, we call it negative confession. Look at me. I can't be wretched. No, this is not what I'm saying. There is a state in the spirit. Isaiah did the same thing. He said, woe is me. Do you think these guys were idiots? These were men who were open to spiritual things. See, this teaching is not to help you criticize people. But his help is to help you discern the plane from which people are speaking. When a man talks, you look at the plane. And then you know whether to argue or just keep quiet. It's like when you are in primary school. They teach you that one minus two. When they say one minus two, your answer is it cannot. They mark you. But when you get to secondary school, they teach you something called number line. They dare ask you one minus two. You write it cannot. You are repeating that class. You see that? So it is a reality that exists somewhere and when you say it cannot in the spirit don't criticize the person look at the plane in the days to come we will really know those who are in primary school in the spirit secondary school in the spirit fc in the spirit professors in the spirit look at me there are very few pastors that will qualify to be in the higher institutions of the spirit i am convinced that most of the people in the university of the spirit are quiet members that nobody knows these are men that have mastered the art of doing business with the spirit so while we are all making noise and gyrating with suit these men have taught spiritual things who shall deliver me that's what you must ask the first thing it's an acknowledgement. It's not necessarily to call yourself wretched, but to come to a point where you know that Joshua Selman, you cannot help yourself. You can stretch your ability to help yourself to its limit. See, listen to me. What I am teaching you right now is what the Bible calls the gospel of grace. This is the true picture of grace. Are you getting my point? Grace that is initiated by the power of the cross where a man comes to his life and sees your you see your limitation listen when you allow god to help you it does not mean you don't have any responsibility it is that at that point the best of your ability cannot help you so you are that you are relinquishing your ability does not mean you are relinquishing your responsibility are we getting the balance now the true picture of the grace of god lord I have come to a point where I cannot walk in this my human wisdom. Lord, I have come to a point where this issue of, of, of um, whatever challenge or whatever thing, I have come to a point where I need a supply of grace and strength that is beyond that of my human. That was what was communicated in that word. Oh, wretched man. Paul is saying, what is this frustration? So your prayer can be religious if it's not prayer that is out of a heart of surrender. You can pray because it's a spiritual formula you think can help you on its own. Are you getting my point? The state of surrender is the posture that attracts grace to a man's life. Grace does not just come because you think I need it or Jesus died. No, there is an exact condition for grace to begin to flow in your life. That requirement is what the Bible calls surrender. Please hear me. I hope you believe what I'm sharing with you. What is happening to you right now is what we call liberty in the spirit. Many of you will walk out of this meeting and you will see that chains have left you.
not just by jacking up and down and you will not need to tell lies again that I am standing whereas something is wrong supply of the spirit grace grace so you are struggling with drunkenness and a man of God just tells you be born again Say it's alright. No, it's not alright. Surrender is the requirement to access the door of grace. That the Bible says, come boldly does not mean come with arrogance. Come! Realizing the fact that the mercy of Jesus Christ has created the platform for you to receive of that grace. Hallelujah. And so he supplies that strength. When you are surrendered and you come to him and you say, Lord, I'm tired of carnality. My prayer life is dead. If you do not help, I, I try to pray. Lord, you know that within me. Go to verse 20. Let's start from there. Let's see what Paul is saying. Within me, the Bible says the spirit is willing. But this body that holds the spirit has a law that is at work in it. now if i do that i would not it is no more i okay go to 18 there's something that i'm looking for can we hurry up i want us to pray look at me for i know that in me that is my flesh dwelleth no good thing he said for to will is present with me is that not the condition of many christians have you seen people smoke and at the end they tell you honestly i don't like this have you seen people like that have you seen even people go to the bed of fornication and uh, a lady came to just talk to me open up and when they finish whatever it is that they did they had to pray there they had to pray there what does that tell you that means that there is sincerity in their heart and that's a sign that you have met jesus because if you have not met jesus that check of the spirit will not even be there are you getting what i'm saying please so men of god now tell people you mean you slept with so, so and so person and the person man of god it's not like i don't love god you see why a pastor can be sleeping with a lady it's not like he's not born again are you getting what i'm saying but Paul is saying to will that desire if it is from a human perspective I will never want to do anything bad however there is an influence beyond my will and so I must tap to a higher supply that's what we call grace for to will is present with me but he says how to perform that which is good that's where the ability does not come. So the true picture of what we call today the law is trying to do this second part. Now there is willingness. And you now see I'm using willpower. And there are many ways to use that willpower. You can use willpower. Come. If I'm supposed to hug this lady. Ah! No, 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 no. Why? That's, that's willpower. You see that? So you are feeling that. If I hug this lady right now. You are saying, ah, this is carnality. That's not carnality. It's a sign that the true grace of God has not found expression. Bless you. Grace is an ability. I want your mindset about grace to change. Grace is not just speaking over your life and say you can pass. Uh -uh. There are two dimensions. There is a part of grace that does not require any doing on your part. It just requires an acknowledgement. The name of that acknowledgement is surrender. But there is another dimension of grace that empowers you to play your spiritual responsibility. If you get this, then your grace message is accurate and balanced. I plan for us to finish on time today. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. See, God is speaking to us tonight. Enough of struggling enough of struggling there is a fountain of true grace that can take you beyond the grip of the flesh mm. hear me there is a fountain of power supplied by the agency of the spirit that can make men 
live like gods upon the earth until that becomes a reality you will think everyone talking about it is lying hear me if i used to let me use sorry i keep using these things i use them because i'm speaking apostolically are you getting my point now it's not just to keep hammering our minds but let me use the concept of immorality because that's what is really prevalent assuming before i gave my life to jesus christ i used to sleep around are you getting my point that was normal question do you think if i get born again i will just forget those memories tell me the truth two if i used to watch pornography i mean real watch pornography and i get born again do you think that your brain is just daft that those things will reset those pictures are still there what makes them kill you is a power that activates them that's what is called the power of sin when the power of sin is broken memories pictures and whatever loses its hold in other words it cannot push you to act out its desires again are you getting what i'm saying now so if i walk outside and i see a nude lady the normal response as a man is to be um emotionally attracted and want to sleep with her but that only happens because the power of sin is like fertilizer it fertilizes anything that comes upon it are you getting what i'm saying now the power of sin is not necessarily sin itself the power of sin is a demonic agency that gives strength to the life of sin so if i'm a drunkard when the power of sin comes that drunkenness becomes uncontrolled that's why i can't stop it <laughs> are you getting my point so it is true that many people who preach and say the solution to man's problem is that the power of sin be broken but they didn't explain it to us well they, are con they didn't make sin they just said sin like stop fornication stop this sin is a very serious spiritual discussion there is a power that sponsors it when that power is broken over your life the reality of the life of the Christ finds expression so that you can see a lady that should physically lure you and want you to think some thoughts and you can appreciate her and say wow pretty lady wonderful lady and someone looks at you and says that all tell the truth that's all that is all that's all because see <laughs> you're laughing this is a possibility many people have not come into in the body of Christ. So they even laugh at the possibility. Is it really, really possible? Even in Nigeria, it is possible. Even on campus, it is possible. Hallelujah. Trying to solve the sin problem by religiously running away will not solve. You can, I'm sorry to say it, and please don't think that I'm talking about churches and the rest, but you can drive somebody out of your church for not dressing well. But you won't drive the person from the street for not dressing well is that true you will see the exact thing you were running away from and your mind will help you remove the remaining part of the clothes so you see somebody half dressed i say i close it your mind and say thank you this is all i want you have you have now come into my office who is lying to who in the body of christ tap into a higher supply one day we a pretty lady was passing and i was looking at her and one of my brothers looked at me and said ah apostle and i said you are covering my view <laughs> let me look at <laughs> you see because to the pure all things are pure you have come to a point in the spirit where all things are truly pure when last did you generously appreciate the lady sitting near you and you went back home and slept soundly just said kai you are pretty god is ah god is at work this is this is a gift and then the power of sin could not prevail in your life now the problem is once you see her because your mind was designed to snap the power of sin looks for what to do with that picture and so he starts searching what do we do call her say something and because you are a slave to sin 
your body will act out the desire sponsored by that power. Say, so my dear, can we meet in Kaduna? That's what happened. You see that most of these big men, they are slaves to sin. They just see a lady pass. You see, you can know how much a man is helpless to sin. Some of us brothers were like that, but God is helping us. You can't see any lady and ah, just tap your brother. You have, it's not myself, it's not just to tell yourself to behave. It's to say, Lord, something must be broken tonight. Hallelujah. That power of sin. Broken, 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 broken. Hallelujah. Nine o'clock. When the power of sin is broken over your life, you will experience the same thing. Those of you who have seen people being delivered, right? At least you've seen people being prayed for here. And when you pray for them, after they get up, they tell you, ah, I feel light. I feel something has left me. That's exactly what happens when the power of sin is broken. All of a sudden, you will now see the true you and what you would have done naturally and what was sponsored by hell. All of a sudden, you will say, I always knew it. I knew that I'm not just a womanizer. There is something wicked. Now, this is the real me. I can now serve God in righteousness. Now, I know that I don't just... Have you seen people who take beer? They go to a beer parlor, they take just two bottles and they are drunk. That's the power of sin. Are you getting my point? They, they, no matter what happens, they must get there. And when they take two bottles, then they become victims of it. They can sponsor someone else. People can take even half crate. But they must just go and respond to it. How many of you have seen that when you are fasting, you want to break that fast with anything, even if it's sweet? Question, will sweet satisfy you? Let's, I mean, uh, what they call it? Vicks, if Vicks Lemon Plus. On a normal day, if you come to my house and I give you Vicks Lemon Plus on a tray, won't you be angry? I mean, you came and said, I'm hungry. Now you fasted till three o'clock and that, that nature is fighting. Take anything. Take anything. It's not just, see, let me tell you, on a normal day, there are days that you didn't eat food, but you were not fasting. Nothing happened. That's to tell you that normally you were just busy. Maybe you went to the office or for those of us working or you had lectures and you just found ah, 530 and there is a test maybe by six and you still stayed you came back eight o'clock and you didn't even feel anything you drank tea and you said okay tomorrow let me fast seven o'clock your body is shaking seven one hour after that declaration your body is saying uh -uh. let me round up this series with what i call the keys to experiencing higher dimensions of god's power and glory the keys to experiencing higher dimensions of god's power please take this seriously it will change your life those of us in ministry to change your ministry and it will change everything about you number one prayer and fasting i'm going to go straight to the point and not waste your time isaiah 40 and then luke chapter 4 Verse 1 and 2, for time's sake, I want us to pray. Let's see Luke chapter 4 at least. But write Isaiah 40, and you read from verse maybe 27 down. Talks about they that wait upon the Lord. What does the Bible say will happen? It said they shall renew. Renew their strength. They will mount up with wings. As what? Eagles. They will run. And when humanly speaking, they are supposed to be tired. There is a higher supply that sustains them. They will walk and they will not faint. This is a possibility. Ordinarily, when you walk, you should be tired. When you walk, you should faint. But when you tap into this supply of the spirit, all of a sudden you will see that when men are getting tired, you are still on the move. There is a spiritual system that sustains continuity. This is the secret to a consistent spiritual life. So that issue of up and down, you pray for 8 hours today and then you can't pray for 12 minutes tomorrow. Something is wrong. And Jesus 
being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into where? The wilderness. Next verse please. Being 40 days tempted of the devil and in those days he did eat nothing. And when the days were, were finished or were ended, he was hungered. Now, I'm just trying to tell you that after the baptism of Jesus, he went straight to go and fast and pray. Please and please, I want you to learn this tonight. If you want to step into higher levels of grace, higher levels of spiritual dimension. I read the story of a man who wanted to invoke the devil and see the devil and they gave him a condition in your called real story that he would fast for 11 months and in that 11 months he would not sleep in the afternoon and he will only break in the night if he could satisfy that condition he will invoke the devil and he did when he was six months he was tired one day and he forgot and he slept in the afternoon and he had to start again but after 11 months lucifer appeared to him because that that fasting for that time is like you are pressing a spiritual code suddenly lucifer appeared and said you asked for it i'm here so what is the thing and he started asking him a lot of questions one year man what's his name i can't remember now omar bajesu or something like that that's that man this is what happens in the demonic realm right when you fast and pray that is when you will see the other dimension of grace i'm talking about not just that it is done for you but your fasting and prayer now brings you to that spiritual alignment are you getting my point fasting and prayer i've said it fasting and prayer does not bring miracles fasting and power and, and prayer does not in itself bring power fasting and prayer as far as i'm concerned solves one issue unbelief it brings your capacity to a point where you can understand and align appropriately so that spiritual things will begin to happen in your life verse 14 let's rush to verse 14 so jesus went to fast and pray not fast and sleep not fast and gist many of us starve what we call fasting i'm telling you the truth from god's perspective is hunger strike he said is this not a fast i have commanded that means there is a kind of fast you know we do a lot of religious things and we want people to see they say come and eat now you say ah uh, this is my 11th day i've been fasting who cares just don't disturb us if you are fasting it's between you and god must you tell us it's 11 days and um, well when i get to the 15th day i'll start taking water if you like fast for one million days that's your cup of tea but i'm telling you that fasting is a personal affair is doing something to your spiritual man brothers and sisters if you do not fast there are some dimensions you may never enter spiritually now verse 14 it says and jesus returned after fasting what happened he returned in the power notice he was filled with the holy ghost but we did not see the power of the spirit but after fasting and praying, the power of the Spirit was at work. You see the difference? He had the presence of the Holy Ghost. But he probably would not do any signs and wonders. So the Bible says it this way, Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus first with the Holy Ghost at the baptism. Second, with power when he went to fast. The place of prayer and fasting is the place where you contact true spiritual power. Acts chapter 4 verse 31. Please let's rush. Acts 4 31. We saw this in the life of the apostles. So even in the New Testament. Fasting and prayer. Was part of the church. Let's look up. Um, okay well. Here just talks about prayer. But there's a place where they fasted and prayed. It said and when they had prayed. What happened? The place was shaken. It's as much as possible add your to your prayer fasting it's like adding fuel to fire your prayer life will be richer when you fast while they separated themselves and they prayed and fasted the holy ghost spoke to them fasting 
brings you to a point prayer and fasting brings you to a point where the voice of the spirit comes crystal clear upon your spirit man crystal clear the encumbrance is that dwell in the realm of the flesh are now swallowed up because you see the flesh is only active when there is food there is a relationship between food and this realm and when it crosses its boundary it empowers the flesh the place were shaken and they were assembled together and they were all filled with the holy ghost and they spake the word of god with boldness fasting gives you boldness fasting and prayer gives you boldness let me tell you we have seen this in this house there are many people who came if you see somebody who is weak and if you are suffering from inferiority let me tell you the antidote pray go and join the prayer band for one month stretch in tongues every day and see how the spirit of boldness swallows up fear and timidity i've seen people who the first time i met some of them will not even be able to look at you but after a season of prayer that weight just breaks down because god helps you even our little children that you see here look at the boldness in all of them because of the ministry of prayer you do bible study without prayer forget about boldness let me guarantee you forget about boldness i was teaching the school of ministry students and i tell them if you are about starting a ministry start it first as a prayer meeting not a bible study fellowship i know it looks religious the word word pray you will never truly pray and forget the word of god let me tell you the truth if you make spiritual contact eventually you will stop and consider the word but you can sit down with tea and, and coffee and say okay let's consider now the book of colossians and somebody is just snoring the pathway to death and a time will come where once there is no activity of the spirit the flesh will start coming in you see the only one who will share Benga, we are tired of your face. Oh. Ah, give Lillian flesh. Look at a church that prays. They are men of power. Look at a ministry that prays. Look at a family that prays. There are some, family that, some families that really pray. Thank God for some of our mothers. No matter how tired you are, five o'clock, you're already hearing worship in the parlor. The meaning of that is wake up. And when you were growing up some of us insulted our parents because we did not understand watch this today you thank god because there are some histories that will never be associated with your life not because you were nice in yourself prayer build you out he said watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation brothers you see the key watch and pray so that you will not be sitting down somebody tells you Let's go and visit one of my friends. The moment you are going, police will just put you inside Black Maria and say, let's go. They did stealing around. He said, no, no, I'm just coming out. They say, you go and explain it in the station. Watch and pray. It gives you discernment. How many people have been jailed for doing nothing because they could not walk circumspectly? Prayer and fasting. One key that will bring heaven's dimension to operate in your life there is no exact formula for praying and fasting but i encourage people generally it is my personal spiritual growth principle that your prayer and fasting life should be at least at least once in for a start let's say once in two weeks I fast at least once in a week at least and that's all right you don't need to fast six times in seven days not necessarily if you're on a program that's okay but incorporate it not as one religious thing after you fast for 21 days you die for the remaining part of the year no let it be part of your spiritual growth please just do what I'm telling you even if it is religiously just do it and see what happens to your spirit now hallelujah at least once a week huh you can use the day you are sure you won't cook well or where there's no nice food if you fast on sunday you are looking for trouble if god instructs you fast otherwise you can and don't just fast the day when you are you want to sleep 
and then you fast and sleep and then it just so happens that you woke up and it was 4 30 and then you just prayed a little and still played koinonia message and slept and you woke up five minutes to six you started peeling orange banana and the rest you didn't fast accurately you won't maximize the spiritual blessings praise the lord you fasted and the whole day you were cooking for what you eat in the evening that's not fast it's not fast number two very rich and consistent word study life you want the glory of god to be multiplied upon your life you must have a robust rich and consistent word study life rich word study life let me encourage everyone here you can meet media i think they have I listen to the whole Bible um, every month. I may not be able to read it. Do you know that you can read one book in, in 15 minutes? I mean, you can listen odd on audio. Are you getting my point? The truth is, the probability for you to wake up every morning and do devotionals from 5 to 8 is almost zero. Except you want to become an irresponsible worker in your place of work. If I employ you and you come back by 12 and I ask you what you were doing, you say I was touching heaven. You are out. You are out. Now, there are many believers. Let me balance this. There are many believers that use spirituality to refuse to be productive. They employed you to come and walk. You prayed from 5 till 11. It is good, but you are not wise. So create a system just the same way you read your book and you study in school i don't do that i'm telling you the truth i don't have that time every day at a particular time to study as much as i want and so i have all kinds of systems that are put in place hallelujah there are times that i'm traveling and the time to travel is 5 a.m in the morning are, are you getting my point now you can sit down and miss your flight and tell them <laughs> I'm, I'm a pastor that's your cup of tea a pastor buy your jet or buy your 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 plane or or trust god to move like philip are you getting what i'm saying there are times that there are certain things in your life that are time tag i wake up that and sometimes i wake up maybe 15 minutes to five what can you really do in 15 minutes i'm just bathing and praying in tongues and quickly i'm playing i have audio bible everyone say audio bible is a big blessing that can transform your life i'm giving you a secret i believe that media has audio bible is free go and get it buy a flash buy all of this buy a bigger memory card remove nonsense from your phone and add direct bible praise the lord and you are listening to it sometimes try listening to it and sleep you will find out that while your spirit is sleeping, is picking the signals of that scripture. How many of you listen to messages and you know while you are sleeping, the message is still playing? You are well aware. Let me tell you, that thing is not little. There is a mighty level of translation happening because at that point, your body is sleeping. The biggest problem of your spiritual growth is asleep. And so the Holy Ghost can quickly maximize that opportunity and cover ground before you wake up. I'm, I'm telling you this oh yes i'm telling you this that's why it is while men sleep that the devil comes to plant tears not while men are awake while men sleep there is a mystery of sleep as you sleep most times i don't just sleep silent it doesn't mean that if you have roommates let me balance it now you just get a little speaker and just put something and you disturb people God gave us, he brought technology to help us grow. Get an earphone. A rich word study life. The Bible on the go. The Bible on the go. There are times that all these short, short chapters, Jude, James, you can just combine all of them. Huh? And within an hour, you have listened. Faith comes by hearing. Literally comes by hearing.
you can use devotionals devotionals it may not be the ultimate source of your spiritual growth but please don't trivialize devotionals it's a good way of starting there are many ministries that have devotionals many ministries some of our churches have it buy humble yourself and 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 let it direct and guide you number three there are special bibles that have bible study plans is that true god has helped a lot of people and they have put different bible study plans one year plan two year plan you can you can take advantage of it whatever you will do you must design a systemic way of study consistently i study as the spirit leads will not help you it's not even the spirit that is leading to that kind of confusion so the day you just feel like you say okay where do i study now you know let me tell you this flesh is a dangerous thing you turn to the book of matthew nothing jeremiah jeremiah 12 what will i now study you open again leviticus you know all these kinds of things you open to the gospel you open to revelation you are afraid you close it back and at the end of it you don't study anything constructively you must study and then beyond study you must allow the word of god to grow in you it's not enough just to study you must live by the principles of the word number three okay let me give you a scripture for this second timothy chapter three second timothy chapter three from verse one to seventeen the verse of emphasis is from 14 to 17. second timothy chapter three from verse one but specifically from verse 14 to 17. you can also back up your word study life with rich christian materials oga jordan is there jordan bookstore is open there are all kinds of rich books that can help to back you up carry five thousand carry ten thousand if you can eat food of ten thousand and you cannot buy a spiritual material of ten thousand you are the second man we are talking about that's carnality hallelujah number three fellowship with the spirit through intense worship you want to experience heaven fellowship with the spirit through worship by worship i mean employing the agency of music listen you will never encounter the glory of god if you ignore the place of worship in your life that's why sometimes you see that they are playing this and well it's not just that we want to make noise it's an atmosphere i preached a message years ago called the law of atmosphere when you create the atmosphere for the holy ghost to come you will experience his presence mightily hallelujah worship my my phones are full of all kinds of worship songs some i'm just sitting and i just go on youtube the best worship songs and i look for them i download them i convert them to mp3s straight to my phone and i just lie down and sometimes especially those times when there's no light when your eyes cannot see anything you just play that worship song and you are lost you are in another realm hallelujah and all of a sudden you literally begin to sense the shekinah presence of god in your room when you keep doing that eventually your room becomes an altar an altar is a place where consistent sacrifice is made your room becomes a portal hallelujah if you plan to build create a section in your room and call it your altar with god the threshing floor hmm. some people is the bathroom your toilet and, and trust me it's a good idea for as long as it's building your spiritual life at least nobody will harass you there and you just lock the place and you are lost in worship it's not like you are easing yourself you just need some time for yourself some of us the garage that they are not using you just find one old mattress and throw down there and you lie down sweet spirit i submit to you and you are worshiping and you are just praying in tongues 
and I tell you, if you go online, there are all kinds of worship. There, there's jazz worship. Strong, prophetic jazz worship. No words. Your tongues will be the words. There are instrumentations. Like this. Just play. And guys, you can do something like this and package it. Why not? Do something like that to help the body of Christ. No ministry. You are just creative. You are contributing to the body of Christ. And you will be blessed and rewarded for it. Both financially and otherwise. That's an idea God is giving someone. Imagine that you have this that you are hearing. Take it to your room. It says, Oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul longs for you. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Take your experience of the sanctuary to your secret place. And you are just worshipping. Ah, hello and you invite your husband your wife let the children sleep in the presence of god see if you are married here don't leave your children behind while you're worshiping drag them the bible said train not discuss train drag them come and put the mattress let them sleep in the glory eli was um Samuel was sleeping close to the ark but he still had the voice of god at least sleep but sleep close to the ark some of our little ones are sleeping now they are sleeping in the presence of god let them remain here you don't lose in the presence of god is god helping someone here all of a sudden you find out that there are times you may not have the grace to pray but there is the grace to worship switch from there and you're just singing and sometimes it may just be one song has that happened to you any other song you raise your spirit will reject it because that one song is the communication of what the spirit is doing in your life at that moment it could even just be a phrase ah, 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 elohim any other song will not connect with your spirit ah, 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 and five minutes turns to ten minutes and there is a supply of strength after 10 minutes you thought you will be tired but right now you have broken the barrier 30 minutes you are still worshiping while you're worshiping your body is telling you all kinds of nonsense are you sure you are not busy you know you have lecture ah, hello him while that is happening you're just talking and the flesh is the flesh is reacting to the worship keep worshiping keep worshiping that's why people get tired easily in church the flesh is fighting fighting your rise into a realm the secret is to keep that body there keep the body in the glory and it will start changing a time will come like you tame a horse the body will submit to the dealings of the spirit all of a sudden while you are worshiping at a point you will find out scriptures begin to come hmm, his majesty has stepped in scriptures all of a sudden god begins to speak to you some of us in the midst of that worship when it gets deep the spirit of prophecy oftentimes initiates the coming of the holy ghost all of a sudden prophecy comes and you begin to prophesy you are just praying in tongues you are in the presence alone with him all of a sudden you will start answering your own questions by yourself another spirit the spirit of christ has taken over you are praying all of a sudden you find out the pain is gone completely gone you are praying all of a sudden you find out that you could not sleep because you saw seven carryovers and you say what have i been doing in school and in that presence and the scripture starts coming fear not i have redeemed you i have called you by name you are mine when you walk through the water i will be with you through the river it will not consume you when you walk through the fire all of a sudden courage is arising you have exams but you've not read anything but in the glory you're worshiping you're a man of God. You are preparing for your meeting. And there is nothing to do. See, this is how I prepare for koinonia. Those who know me, especially for the miracle service. Ah! I come and I lie down flat. 
and there is heavy worship well selected selected by spiritual wisdom and I just played and I increased the volume enough to frustrate my body and I lie down there and as the glory comes all of a sudden visions are open and sometimes I'm seeing the things that will happen in the meeting let me stop there fellowship with the spirit in the place of worship the Holy Ghost loves singing when you sing to him whether in the spirit or in understanding you attract his presence notice every man of God that moves heavily in the anointing whether he has a good voice or not there is an affinity to music and deep worship I will follow the lion I will follow the lamb I will serve the lion I will serve the lamb the last point before we pray my goodness what is this that I'm seeing in the spirit I'm literally smelling a fragrance in the spirit literally literally I'm smelling a fragrance with my physical nostrils when you begin to smell things in the spirit it is called the spirit of discernment there's no time to teach you this but it is a manifestation of the spirit of discernment there are times many of you begin to pray and as you go deep you start smelling things scents in the spirit these were ancient davidic patterns of worship the mysteries of the keys of david spiritual formulas that were used to invoke the presence of god hmm. number four the sacrifice of a pure and a holy life the sacrifice of a pure and a holy life you want to see heavy dimensions of god's power and glory you cannot downplay the place of true holiness colossians chapter 3 verse 2 by sacrifice there are certain things you will even need to cut they may not be wrong but you may have to cut them movies associations there are some things you may have to cut for the excellency of that which you want to gain in the spirit you cannot eat your cake and have it in the spirit believe me okay let me give you two more scriptures first thessalonians 5 22 first thessalonians 5 22 hurry up psalm 24 verse 3 and 4 who shall ascend to the hill of the lord he that has clean hands and a pure heart and then second corinthians 6 verse 7 all these scriptures point towards the fact that a life of purity and holiness has a lot to do with the presence of God resting and remaining upon your life the Bible says come out from among them and be ye separate touch not the unclean thing you must create boundaries in your life brothers and sisters do these four things again and again in your life and watch a giant in the spirit arise I don't care what the limitations are now fast and pray without compromise invest quality materials invest in the world invest in quality materials concordances in your uh, uh, bible concordances and so on and so forth takes bible at least if you can lay your hands on get rich spiritual materials number three fellowship with the spirit in the place of worship you can buy a keyboard buy a keyboard or buy juice five for life Come and give um what's his name? Timmy. I almost said Ayo. 
buy five for life and give to me and say to me just play this for me while i record for 30 minutes here is the honorarium for investing your gift in my spiritual growth and you're just playing it and soaking in the spirit we are going to pray we have 10 minutes to pray there's no prayer point we are just going to pray and cry in the spirit hallelujah gaining spiritual stature please everyone participate in this prayer I see people standing outside it's an opportunity to pray hallelujah in the next five minutes we are going to blast in tongues you are going to cry unto God some of you all you need to do is just to lie down and let this worship just soak into you whatever you have to do you have five minutes go ahead and let's do it oh sing in the spirit Come on, build capacity in the spirit. Build strength in the spirit. Let the power of sin break over our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus. We rise from the grip of the flesh, from the grip of carnality, from the grip of the limitations of the flesh. Come on, press a little more for a few minutes. Lord, ignite a fire in us. Ignite a fire upon our spirits. We tap into the supply of grace. The supply of grace. The supply of grace. We rise beyond the flesh. We rise beyond the grip of the flesh. We are free from the lust of the eyes. We are free from the lust of the flesh. We are free from the pride of life. The affinity for material things dies away from our life. The affinity for this world and all that it has to offer loses its grip upon our life we become spiritual men spiritually minded spiritually minded even in prosperity we are spiritually minded in excellence we are spiritually minded when God blesses us, we are spiritually minded. We have no affinity to blessings. We receive them. We use them. But we are never attached to them. Our 
our attachment, our love, our commitment is to the Lord Most High and the purposes of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything that has corrupted your Christian experience, everything that you have struggled with, in the name of Jesus, this system of the Spirit will lift you above the grip of the flesh. In the name of the Lord Jesus, therefore I break the power of sin over your life sin has no dominion over you in the name of Jesus Christ the power of sin that leads men to fornication the power of sin that leads men to pride the power of sin that leads men to gluttony the power of sin that brings prayerlessness the power of sin that brings carelessness in spiritual things I command in the name of Jesus Christ that that grip, that hold of sin is broken over your life now. I declare that you are alive unto righteousness. You are alive unto true holiness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I command that by the activity of the Holy Ghost upon your life, let sickness be far from you. You rise to a realm where SS can truly now change to AA. You rise to a realm where infirmity can no longer dwell in your mortal body. You rise in the spirit to a realm where curses and spells and yokes and enchantments can no longer have a grip upon you. You rise to a level where there is a limitless supply of wisdom limitless supply of power limitless supply of strength this teaching brings you to a realm where God begins to do business through your hands I pray for you by the anointing of the Holy Ghost your hands that are lifted may they be instruments of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ I release the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon these hands that are lifted from today lay hands on the sick and watch them get healed from today i put fire upon your mouth i command in the name of jesus Make it a patata. Power comes upon your life. Power comes upon your life. Power comes upon your life. I administer the supply of the Spirit upon you. I administer the supply of grace. I administer the supply of strength. I administer a new order of miracles, a new order of signs, a new order of wonders a new order of favor a new order of the manifestation of the holy ghost receive grace for the manifestation of the holy ghost everywhere you go everywhere you preach begin to see a demonstration of the holy ghost you will pray for men they will be filled with the holy ghost your roommates will be filled with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, you become an agency, a container of spiritual power. You become a bank of spiritual power. I invoke this from the heavens. Let it come upon your life. I place the word of God upon your spirit man. I stamp your life with the word of God. Hallelujah. And I prophesy upon your life that everything that was impossible, I declare that now that you have risen to a new spiritual plane, I activate possibilities in the spirit now. 
hear me there are many of you that have never seen visions before but in this new plane in the spirit i open your eyes now 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 to visions in the spirit i open your eyes let the spirit of prophecy come upon as many as many not prophetic office not the office the manifestation start hearing god hear the voice of the spirit with clarity i tune your spirit to the frequency where the voice of god will thunder and echo upon your spirit without restraint hallelujah i declare that this house becomes a place where men of the spirit are raised in the name of jesus many of you will sleep tonight and the lord will give you divine solutions he will show you what to do about your family problem he will show you what to do about your academic problem hallelujah now very quickly before we take the announcement lift your hands let me speak over your exams by next week many of us are starting our exams father in a way you have never done before i know that you hear me when i pray and i'm asking you to do something strange in this house reveal questions to people before they get to exam halls i ask this as a request in the name of the lord jesus there are people this is what you need to graduate by the mercy of the lord most high in the name of jesus i impart upon you grace to study i speak to your cgpa cgpa it's time to hear the word of the lord it's time to rise high it's time to rise high those of you under probation by prophecy we bail you out of probation in the name of the lord jesus christ i command excellence in your exams those who did not do well in your assessment i pray for you in the name of jesus you will see the wonders of god as you write your exams no script will be missing in the name of jesus i declare for many of you who the lecturers have had a track record of failing people this time around because your turn has come the heart of a king is in the hands of the lord I declare that their hearts are turned for your favor turned for your favor hallelujah as you study may the lord reward you in the name of the lord jesus very quickly you are here and you've never given your life to jesus christ you have not made a commitment before we continue i'd like to give you an opportunity we've spoken about three kinds of men probably you just walked into this meeting or you have been walking doing the things of god but you are saying i'm tired of my life i want a new beginning you may have even given your life to christ but you found yourself derailing you just found out that because of some kind of pressure you have left the way of the lord i'm giving you an opportunity wherever you are right now please in the next few seconds i'd like you to run and come out i'd like to lead you to jesus christ wherever you are i'll just count one to four one hallelujah don't be ashamed don't be afraid don't wait for anybody if there is anyone like that you're welcome backsliders those who want to give their hearts to the lord god bless you there are people coming hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah i see someone coming god bless you don't sit back don't wait for anybody god bless you celebrate them please make way clear the way for them clear the way for them clear the way jesus is calling you into a new experience don't sit back when you hear the voice of the Lord, He calls you to bless you. He calls you to change you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for coming. I love you from the depth of my heart. I celebrate you for this great decision. I'd like you to lift your voice and say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender totally to your Lordship. I believe 
that you are Lord of my life. I declare that my sins are forgiven. You give me a new start beginning from today. The power of sin is broken over my life. From today, the past is gone and everything becomes new. I'm a child of God. I'm born again. Let me pray for you. Father, preserve these ones. I pray. Every legal hold the devil has over their lives, I command it and I declare it broken right now. I decree and I declare that you will make giants out of them, both in this life and in the spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever is not of God, I take authority over it in your life and I declare that you will walk in true freedom and liberty in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for taking this bold step. I'd like you to just follow the usher waving his hands. They'll have your details and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.